and Justine Ennin. And welcome inside Arthur Ashe Stadium along with Tracy Austin, John McEnroe, Ted Robinson. You notice how excited Tracy's been Tracy's waiting getting dressed nine for the occasion. days for this. <laughs> this women's match we've had to watch a lot, Tracy, and this is the one you've been waiting for. This is the juicy match. And as you said, Ted, this is the match that we've been waiting for since the draw came out. And of course, Serena seated eight here, but that reflects the little amount of tournaments that she's played, but it doesn't reflect how she how she has played in her results this year. Because she has started the year off superb with that Australian mm -hmm. Open win, one in Miami in the final. Finals over Justine, then at the French loss to Justine Handley in the semifinals and in three sets in the quarterfinals at uh, Wimbledon. So we're glad to see Serena back because since Wimbledon, she hasn't played because of that left in rest, uh, left thumb injury. And John, it's interesting because if you look at this, I guess I say if, if, if Australia Serena plays, this could be a terrific <laughs> night. If the Serena that played in Paris comes out tonight, it wasn't a very entertaining match. Well, Ted, it's a, these conditions suit Serena mm -hmm. better than Justine. She prefers a little bit more time, and Serena's definitely going to try to force the issue. Mm -hmm. And she proved down under in Australia that she doesn't need a whole lot of match play because she can just step it up. Now, that is a risky proposition. She almost lost there early in the tournament, but once she got it going, she got into full gear, and she's going to need to do that today against Justine Hennon. And remember, she got in injured in Wimbledon before she played Justine. I would have given her the edge at Wimbledon on the quicker court. Justine's proven to be one of the great clay court players of all time. And you got to enjoy Justine Hennon. To me, she's the male, female Roger Federer. She can hit any shot from any position. She can serve pretty big for a girl only about five, five and a half. Right. I'm, I'll, I'll give her five, six, because she's so good. <laughs> but it, you know, it, it's phenomenal how well she's done in her career, given the fact that She's playing against a lot taller women most of the time. And this, to me, is what's fascinating about this matchup. And, Tracy, you know, Marion Bartoli said this over the weekend when she lost to Serena. She said when the points got important, Serena hit serves. I couldn't even see them. Well, Yet Justine, at her size, is able to stand in there and return Serena's serve. Well, it's very different. Their, their, their strengths are very different. I mean, Serena, obviously, at 5'10", much more powerful and the biggest serve in the women's game. And she can hit the four corners beautifully. Justine, with a very good good serve, but it's the variety in her game that makes her number one in the world. That beautiful backhand, the, abu the ability to slice that backhand and change the pace up and come up with the angles. And Justine is very comfortable up at the net, knows where to position herself, volleys extremely well. But as John said, I think this match is going to depend on how well Serena plays because right. this court is quicker. And Justine has only beaten Serena one time on any surface other than clay, and that was at Wimbledon this year. When Serena's thumb was bothering her. I think Tracy hit a good point. It's very simple. If Serena plays up to her ability, she wins. If she doesn't play up to her ability, I think Justine will win. So which Serena do we see on this big night in New York City? A spot in the U.S. Open semifinals at stake. Excuse us. Psych is taking a break, but we'll return after the U.S. Open. <laughs> No, that's right. An all-new Psych, Friday at 10, only on USA. Heads or toes? The best three right here. Game day. Game day. Oh, oh beautiful. Shake three. And zero. Focus. Focus. Oh, seven, right. seven, six. Get it out. Put it over. What? Slide right. And he's cheating. It's like cheating. Try this one. It's a good way. We have tight score. Corn. Try get corn up. oil. Salt, Saturdays with Dad, Fritos. It's not that complicated. Without a doubt, the sharpest place on TV is the Knife Collector Show. If you like knives, this show has it all. From small tacticals to long fantasy swords, there's Japanese katanas, fixed blades, and dealer sets too. Lots of handcrafted knives that won't cut a big hole in your wallet. It's all here on the Knife Collector Show. Friday at 2 a.m. Eastern, only on Shop at Home. For more information, go to shopathometv.com slash TV for a complete schedule. Open on USA is brought to you in part by American Express, official card of the US Open, and by Lexus, 
Lexus proud to bring you the 2007 U.S. Open. Well, we have a couple of just fabulous nights of tennis in store for you here at USA Primetime at the Open, and we're hoping you're going to enjoy them in high definition on Universal HD. It's presented by DirecTV. For the most sports in HD, you've got to get DirecTV. Oh, it almost feel like this is opening night in a sense, don't you? I mean, like, the, obviously, we're moving into the final rounds. The energy level, the, the buzz is going to be that much sharper. It's been a very strong U.S. Open, Ted. A lot of close matches, particularly on the men's side. A lot of effort being put out there. And, you know, it's, it's been a bit of a bummer with the women so far, especially at USA at night. But uh, this hopefully will make up for it. And, of course, Serena and Justine Ennin tonight. Tomorrow night, Venus Williams and Yelena Yankovic will play the first match primetime at the Open. And then the winners of these two will play each other on Friday in the semis and so there's been much discussion about this but the reality is that the women which tends to get overlooked in the conversation when the women play a, a tier one tour event they play every day best of three here at the majors they get at least a day off between best so, of three. so that semi so. and final Friday and Saturday shouldn't be that difficult because they're not asked to do what the men do which is to play best of three most of the year and then step up to best of five in the majors. Should we ever consider that, Jason? By the way, get the women playing best of five? We used to play best of five in the finals of our championships. We did that for a few years, and then they did away with it. I mean, it's equal prize money. Come on, get them out there. Oh, man, he's starting quickly, Ted. <laughs> Serena Williams. What did you expect? <laughs> So here we go with Serena Williams. Well, ironically, let's point out, because of that match with Djokovic and Monaco, it's, it's half full here. It's going to fill up. It's going to take a couple games to get all the people in. This makes it, makes it a little weird for Annette and Williams here early. And it's the, only, it's the only regret so far. This should be that moment like we had last night with all the flash bulbs going off when Federer was playing. Love to Speaking of weird, it's still a little difficult. People trying to fight their way in. It's still a little difficult to realize that Justine and Serena are playing in the quarters. And these are the two best players of the gener their generation, along with Venus Williams. I'd put her in there as well. Three players with the most grand slams. I don't know why the U.S. Uh, T.A. doesn't make a rule that says they can, you know, make the seedings according to what they want, so this doesn't happen. Get her higher seeded, Serena. Wimbledon does that. 15 Venus. How bizarre was that to make Venus, who's 31 to 23? Yeah, though? where did they I mean, get that number? <laughs> how about move her two up. or three? Let's move her up eight places in the seeds. That's crazy. At least they moved her up. major that uses their own thought in seating other than just following the computer rank. We probably do it because the grass is such a different surface, although not as different as it used to be. Grass slower these days, bounces a little higher. to this a uh, break point chances for Hannon. I mean her record here in particular you threw me these stats uh, it's unbelievable how often right. she breaks. Well, she hasn't now clearly her until Safina last round she hasn't played high level competition but she's Justine Hannon in her first four matches 30 return games 23 breaks. First three rounds she played Qualifiers, so. Yes. Well, even so, though, even when you see her at bigger events against tougher opponents, she does lose serve, you know, more frequently than you expect, but she comes right back. Definitely doesn't have as big a serve as Serena, so she's going to have to keep that first service percentage up so Serena can attack the second serve.
And a lot of this match is going to depend on that first strike, the big serve, the big return, who gets ahead in points. And this is a shot that has improved immensely in Ennen's game, that forehand wing. Yes. <laughs> if you can do it, I can do it better. Serena tried to go right at Justine here, intimidate her. It didn't work. She's not easily intimidated. And she's got very quick hands. Keeping that racket head out in front right at you, babe. Look at this. See that she mishits it. She just goes right back at her. The footwork of Justine Hennon is phenomenal. And to me, it's intimidating to opponents to see her, how well positioned she Just is, both that. up at net and at the baseline. Serena's got to get going here. She comes out a little too sluggish to me in these matches. You can get away with it exactly. against the other opponents. And that, that was what perplexed all of us at Roland Garros this year. Uh, granted, Clay would be an advantage for Justine, but Serena didn't appear to be engaged in the match. Very sluggish in her movement. Now they are, they've played three times prior on hard courts, including a match earlier this year. In the Miami final, Serena's won all three career against Hannon on hard court. The surface clearly favors here, but let's not forget that match you mentioned. Justine ran through that first set 6-0, had match point. Was it one or two, Tracy? She had two match points at 5-4 in the second. has played better with each match that she's gone through in this U.S. Open, but she has no match where she's been completely sharp. As Serena says, her thumb which plagued her in the Wimbledon match with Hannon. She says that's fine. Now, other people in her family have hinted that she's fighting some other injuries. Serena won't say anything about it. Other injuries. Mm -hmm. Name, namely, Dad has made that reference to some members of the press. miss it there. That's why they tell you not to swing at your volley. Richard did make one good point though, Ted, and he's, and, and, which I agree with, that Venus looks a whole lot happier and more comfortable than Serena has so far in this tournament. This aura scene. Serena's mom and coach, co-coach co with Richard. Which would lead you to believe that she's not feeling totally confident about her physical well-being. Uh, Venus has also come out ready to play a lot more quickly. Serena's worked herself into matches. She's found herself here again down an early break. Venus looks like she's playing this whole U.S. Open like she finished Wimbledon, just right at the top of her game. It's Venus tomorrow, right? First up and then um, Andy Roddick and... Roger Federer, we got a good night tomorrow with the Yankovic match. These women got delayed a little bit in their start, obviously, last night. Yankovic walked down the hallway to the locker room after her match and was telling all the people in there, I was ready to play at 3 o'clock, and I went on at 9 o'clock because they had two five-set men's matches. Now, that's a delay. And, of that's course, a real Bomber delay. had the same, same scenario. 
Kristen Yankovic was dressed about four or five hours before her match. Serena and Justine were relaxing in the locker room. Yeah, they were probably scheduled to go at about 7.30, so it's not that big yes. a delay, maybe 45 minutes. Yeah. All right, Serena gathers herself and holds it low. Nasal allergy symptoms like congestion can occur at any time, and it's hard to avoid the things that cause them. Prescription Nasonex helps relieve nasal allergy symptoms like congestion, Maybe that's why 6 million nasal allergy sufferers used Nasonex last year. Side effects were generally mild and included headache, viral infection, sore throat, nosebleeds, and coughing. For more information, talk to your doctor and ask if Nasonex is the one for you. Official U.S. Open. Tony Bennett is in the house. Monica Sellis. He was working a lot with Vita Sova right before the U.S. Open, hitting an awful lot. Tony Bennett's what, 81? Still sings great. Incredible. <laughs> 15 months. I saw him at Carnegie Hall not too long ago at a charity, and he just, he, he, he sang without the mic. Is that right? <laughs> pin drop, beautiful. About a year ago, I saw Tony Bennett and Paul McCartney, how about that, did a set together, and young kids were enraptured by it. There's the great Martina Navratilova. And the champions draw here. Playing singles. Four women are playing singles, and there's a mixed doubles event as well. Oh. Singles and men's and women's. Yes. You're going to go see that match, Navratilova, Conchita <laughs> Martinez, aren't you, Ted? I think that's on the USA winner to play Nevada no. Thursday day, I think. <laughs> it's a tremendous ball by Annan, who really stepped into that back, and it just shows you how well Serena Williams can cover a tennis court. And this is what has always made Serena and Venus special, is on the the dead run on the defense come up with offense. They raise the bar in women's tennis. 40 seconds. When you're slipping and sliding on clay, that's a tougher ball to retrieve. Serena clearly moves better, more comfortable on this surface. Justine loves to use the variety and the angles and loves to slide on the clay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a hold for Ennin for 3-1. Three, three games to one for set. Just Cruz, Gorgas, Peronkova, Makarova. And then against Dinara Safina, you expected a little bit more of a contest, but moved through nicely, love and two. 
Christine said that she was happy to play that well against Safina. Safina obviously top 15, so she knew that was gonna, supposed to be a tougher match. So sure on that backhand win. The forehand side of Williams, usually more airs. I don't often see that in the women's game, not even that much in the men's, uh, taking the second serve and coming right in on it. Particularly on a Serena Williams second serve, one of the best second serves in the game, great depth, Boy, she great been, kick. There was a great example of that That's second serve. Yeah, skipped right off the back of the line. It up to 115 there. Biggest so serve so far early in this match. Beautiful service motion keeps it very simple. It's just about filled up, so Serena wants to keep this close. And they that energy that's going to start coming from the crowd may help her get back in the set. This next changeover should about do it. And you'll start to hear a real buzz out there. Shows you how hard Hennen, Hennen works on her game and her off-court training, that she can take a ball up above her shoulder at 5'5", 120 yep. or something, and Carlos, put that much on it. Carlos Rodriguez, working with Justine since she was 14. So a 40 love game has gone to Deuce. Henning scrambled so well from the baseline too that she's quick enough where she doesn't have to guess on some of those balls, mid-court balls. And Serena didn't see her moving and you know try to uh, overhit that forehand, try to put too much on it. Now, last night we were sitting here, and Tracy, you were talking about this. Young player Chuck Vitadza, who's now in the top ten, and how she needs to be encouraged to hit through the ball, hit through the ball, and look at this story with the size that you referenced, John. And she has enough game, enough pop, to be number one with all the big hitters in the game. Definitely physically a disadvantage, but it truly is a terrific story. One break for Ennin so far. event we all find unexpected values on the Lexus you've always wanted but like summer it won't last forever the event now through September 4th see your Lexus dealer why would I buy tennis lessons how's this you don't have to pay the charge while American Express helps resolve it I don't get to dispute it we call it dispute resolution resolve disputes interesting <laughs> Umlaut, umpire at the 85 U.S. Open. Mac and roll. Wait, there's a chance that ball did hit the line. You're not evil. Come here. Less arguing. That's why I'm a card member. Are you handling disputes with a simple phone call? Are you a card member? Her bread always came from her oven. She spent all day on her pot roast, and the buttons on her gingerbread men had to be double chocolate chip. That's how grandmas showed their love. Marie Callender's does it with her chicken pot pie. A flaky crust filled with juicy white meat, tender vegetables, and absolutely no shortcuts. Marie Callender's. Marie's dinners are also filled with her special touches and real ingredients. 
welcome to our prime time at the open presented by American Express live on USA a couple of terrific nights of tennis and it begins tonight with the number one woman in the world Justine Ennen and Serena Williams her fourth meeting this year which is extraordinary given the fact neither has played an overwhelming amount of tennis. We went three and a half years, Ted, without playing a single match. Every tournament that both have been in this year, they have played. Justine's played 10, and this is Serena's eighth event. So I've done my math right, Tracy. They played just four of the same events. <laughs> but that's not I did that's, go to Stanford, right? <laughs> That's, that's pretty good, considering they went so long since right. Wimbledon 2003. Until this year, and now Justine and Venus Williams, who, that's a possible semi here. They have not played in four and a half years. Fifteen old. So the end point is that this is great for the women's game. They need this. We need this. I'm not sure we need it in the quarters every single Grand Slam. That's, what's the luck of that? Three Grand Slams in a row. They should also have this, cut the schedule for the women significantly, be less tournaments, and then they entered more of the same events. So they play more often. I don't know when they're going to start doing that. They are doing that. Tomorrow, I hope. <laughs> Serena says that she'd never play more than about 12 or 13 anyway. And Justine has cut down her schedule immensely because of that energy sapping virus she got in 2004. Remember how hard she trained off the court and really beat her body up in the gym and sprints and weights? Trains differently now. see her shots here on this surface it's had a more penetrating yep. and, and, and movements easier for her and she's starting to find herself now was it the first couple of games she wasn't really into it again and now Serena seems to be in her rhythm so the first break point for Serena and then serving the ace First ace up at 114. So got some good pop there. off that forehand a bit. I was talking to another player on the women's tour today, a longtime player, and the point came up that you see it again. He said, you know, Justine Ennen did something with her coach Carlos Rodriguez a couple of years ago that she just made a commitment that she was going to hit the ball to be number one in the world 